Dogs are a huge part of many lives, including mine. I decided to learn about the history of the Border Collie breed. I have a Border Collie named Chocolate, and I've always wondered how a breed acquired these traits and what they are used for. This is the inspiration for this project, the purpose of the Border Collie breed, and their relationship to their owners. Border Collies have been around since the 1800s. Their first job was to herd sheep for the shepherds on the border between Scotland and England. These borders are hilly and can be dangerous. The dogs had to herd sheep down to the shepherd's farm. Border Collies developed high stamina that lasts all day. You can see that in the modern day Border Collie. Old Hemp is recognized as the father of the Border Collie. He was born in 1894 and his parents didn't have any special herding traits. For some reason, the mix of his parents worked very well for Old Hemp. He led the sheep very well and worked well with his owner. Working well with his owner was a huge part in his success. Old Hemp spent most of his life going to street sheep trials, showing and being a stud to at least 200 puppies. His grandchildren became winners of the International Sheepdog Trials, which is where the best border collies compete. Old Hemp wasn't able to compete in these trials because he died in 1903 and the trial started in 1906. The second major dog that contributed to the border collie breed is Old Kemp. He's known for having a very sweet, friendly personality. Without Old Kemp as a, in the Border Collie bloodline, the breed would not be a family dog today. Old Kemp was also bred for his willingness to please his owner. Many dogs can be very smart, but if they don't have a desire to please their owner, they are not effective sheep herders. He was one of the puppies from Old Kemp, which improved his bloodlines for herding sheep. Border Collies have been a working with humans ever since the 1800s when they were used for sheep herding. The border collie is also known for the white tips on their tails or the shepherd's guiding star. When it was dark or there was difficult weather, the shepherds would use white tipped tails to find where their border collie was. When the border collies became known for their herding ability, their popularity skyrocketed in, with shepherds in Europe. For the past 200 years, border collies have been, um, been used for that purpose. Things changed during World War I when both sides used messenger dogs to deliver letters to headquarters. Border Collies were very useful in this sort of situation because of their breeding and previous working style. Richardson, who is a well-known dog trainer in World War I, explains, The messenger dog had to work in a similar manner as the sheepdog, traveling great distances from the handler to do his job. Other skills were very important, too. Their intelligence was needed because they had to problem solve by themselves. Also because their body and brain needed to be stimulated and they were focused on their task. Their speed was an important factor because they needed to dodge mines and bullets. Border Collies were bred to please, so they were reliable and happy to do their job. There were farms with Border Collies near the battles, making it easy to find and train them. All these factors made Border Collies a great match for, for a messenger dog in World War I. The factors also contributed to the modern day border collie. Other things have evolved since the 1800s. Women have gotten the right to vote, but humans have also caused global warming and have devastated species to extinction. Humans make improvement, but also cause permanent damage. This is what has happened to the modern day border collie. Originally, border collies had one color, black and white, but now they have other colors, and each new color includes its own health problems. It's a problem because the new colors are very popular. For example, Merle Border Collies are prone to deafness, blindness, and skin cancer. Border Collies also have expanded new types and variations of body structures and coat. There are three main types of Border Collie body structures. Each one is bred for a certain job. The first type is the show type. Their heads are rounder, their coats are longer, and they tend to be boxier than other border collies. These dogs are bred for just the appearance and showmanship, not for temperament or natural instinct. This is leading to health problems such as inbreeding in border collies, which is where the best, only the best female breeds with the best male. Then their offspring only breed with the best of the best. So, genetically, they are very similar. This breeding causes health problems including hip dysplasia. These side effects with uncertain temperament or functionality make, make it so they cannot become household pets. Their natural instinct and their intelligence is decreased. 
This type is generally less hyper than other types. The second body type of Border Collies is the working type. These dogs are solely bred for their natural instinct to herd and the traits that improve herding. They need to be the smartest, fastest, and hardworking of the types. This type has many different coat lengths depending on what the handler slash shepherd wants. Sometimes the handler lives in a hot climate, so the coat is thinner, or the handler lives in a really rocky area, so the pads and the paws need to hold up against the terrain. It all matters on what will be the most effective for herding. These dogs are generally very healthy because their mind and their bodies are stimulated. Many of the working dogs are protected by rules that ensure overbreeding does not become a problem. The rules are made by clubs, for example, the American Border Collie Association. Working Border Collies tend to be too much energy for a person who doesn't work, walk their dog or stimu stimulate their minds. Many Border Collies have become destructive when they are born. This is why many shepherds try to keep their dogs engaged so that their dog doesn't get bored. These dogs tend to be more independent than other types and they tend to bond with one person, who is generally their trainer. The trainer and the dog need to have a very close bond and good communication so the dog can figure out problems without his trainer. These dogs have more of a working relationship than a pet relationship. This type is also great for other dog sports like agility, obedience, and rally. Then we have the mix of the extremes. This is our third type, the family slash general type. It is a mix of the less intense show type and the more active and intelligent working type. Many families love having a border collie this type because the dog can go on long hikes and play with the kids all day long but can also be very affectionate and calm. These dogs are used for many different things. Since they don't have most of their instincts bred out of them like the show type, they can still herd animals. Many people go to sheep farms to train their dog how to herd sheep. This type is also great for agility. This type can even do showmanship. This is from the show type. And they can do the more intellectual slash physically demanding sports that comes from the working type. These dogs can be attached to a whole family and they have a very strong relationship with their family and they always want to know where their herd is. Through the years, many things have changed about the Border Collie breed and their purposes, but one thing has stayed the same. For the most part, Border Collies have been bred for working, but also as a best friend. <laughs>